Viewpoints and promises made during the following program are not those of WFLA AM, its staff, management, or parent company, iHeartMedia Incorporated. Welcome to the Bartow Ford Real Animals Radio Show, your weekly voyage into Florida fishing. Presented by Hubbard's Marina, hosted by Captain Mike Anderson and Captain Dylan Hubbard. Good morning, Tampa Bay. Captain Dylan Hubbard here for the Bartow Ford Real Animals Radio Show this morning from the beautiful iHeartMedia Empire, talking fishing, and going to be here until 8 o'clock. Unfortunately, only till 8 o'clock. Got my friend Captain Travis Thompson in studio this morning from all Florida, and we are going to be chatting all things inshore, nearshore, and offshore fishing, and hopefully we'll be hearing from you as well. Remember, you can join the conversation, 1-800-969-9352, if you want to bring us a fishing conversation fishing question a fishing report or just want to say hello again 1-800-969-9352 as far as weather goes we uh we have a pretty nice forecast coming up huh, i said it, i said it looked like a summer summer forecast almost yeah it was uh it was looking even better last night it's picked up a little bit but not much we have a really weak cold front making its way down and meandering very slowly we're getting into that time of year late april early may where those cold fronts struggle to make it across and uh, really struggle to push down far enough to affect our area and that's what's happening this early work week around monday night tuesday morning that cold front will kind of dip into the area but it's only going to lower our high temps a couple of degrees we're going to go from upper 80s mid 80s upper 80s to like low 80s yeah it's not going to change it much <laughs> you won't still gonna be warm it. yeah it'll just be a little drier a little less humid which is uh, going to be some welcome reprieve uh, so a little less humid uh, but not too much cooler from that front what it will do is it'll break up this little period of high pressure yep and that'll be good because it's been bluebird skies uh, uh, high pressure it hasn't been a super strong high pressure we haven't had the really strong east winds from that high pressure but it's definitely been a static high barometer so breaking up that barometer making it move a little bit will be a good thing i know how that works inshore how does that work offshore same yeah it's pretty much the same i think it has a little less of an effect offshore i would say uh, the it's maybe one of the many variables i feel like inshore has a little bit of a bigger impact yeah in that shallower water yeah because I, that's what i was gonna say because the water shallower so yeah. i feel like maybe they feel it yeah i, think, I don't know that that's the right because they're but. they're under less atmospheres of pressure in my mind that i've thought about this before and that's kind of what i concluded is like the offshore fish if you're fishing at 100 foot they're under three atmospheres of pressure already right. on top of what we feel you know because every 33 feet is another atmospheric pressure so if you're at 100 feet, you're under three atmospheres plus the one that we're all under here at sea level. I wonder if anyone listening to this show knows the answer to that. What? Like, is it felt more in depth or is it felt less? I'm sure somebody does. Yeah. Our listeners are very intelligent. Because you and I don't actually. <laughs> Much smarter than us. <laughs> but no, it's, it's, inter it's an interesting thought because you think about that all the time. And yeah. I mean, you fish inshore, you fish mm -hmm. offshore, you, you, yeah. you fish all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm primarily an inshore guy. When I go offshore, I'm getting in your boat or something yeah. like you know what i mean i'm going with somebody that knows what they're doing mm -hmm. i'm not paying as much attention to this stuff i'm trusting yeah. that they did yeah i mean ultimately it it comes down to i think a multitude of variables offshore i think there's a lot more pieces of the puzzle that could affect the bite uh and ultimately i always tell people not to get too caught up in it because it is uh it's not a science right it was only one of those pillars that might make the fish chew or might make the fish not chew. And, and Mike talks about it all the time. He, he loves to be wrong, and I say the same thing. It's, it's nice when you stand in front of the guests in the morning, you're like, hey, today's going to suck. <laughs> like, and then you can't keep them out of the boat. And then, yeah, all of a sudden we do really, really well. There's too many variables in anything we do in wildlife. Mm -hmm. Like you make a guess off solar, off pressure, off weather, whatever. Mm -hmm. There's just too many variables that yeah. you, you could never control for all of them yeah yeah and, and there's definitely a way that you can kind of be like all right everything's lining up this looks good uh, but you don't want to i think not go 
because things aren't lined up perfectly right that's what i'm trying to say there, there's a principle in waterfowl stuff called mm -hmm. a moist soil management mm -hmm. and the father of that said if you took a 10-year period of time over a piece of land mm -hmm. and you monitored like these 17 factors or whatever and it was like 17 or 18 factors if you monitored them you would over that 10 period your period of time have like maybe one day where those seven there's that 17 factors are exactly the same twice whoa because it would just there would just be so many variables i mean because a factor could be like how much moisture is on the land so that mm -hmm. factor is not just one thing like it yeah. could be from zero moisture to two yeah. inches of water or whatever yeah. so like the the variables could then vary within them mm. and it's like you know over a 10 year period you get really lucky if you have two days are exactly the same that's interesting. it's like that's why it's so hard to predict what a bird's going to do, what a fish is going to do, what a deer's going to do. Like, it's that's what makes it fun, right? Yeah. Even <laughs> even if it was a science, it's hard to predict when it would all yeah. be the same. Yeah. I mean, it is a science, but you're never going to have those variables be exactly that's interesting. what you want them to be. Speaking of science, there is a full moon early work week as well. So we've got the low pressure with the full moon. So we just told you that the variables don't matter. But <laughs> if you do care about them, they do line up nicely at the beginning of this work week to make the bite at the end of this week. And really today and tomorrow and into Monday morning should be spectacular because you're on the front side of that cold front. You're on the front side of that full moon. So uh, some of the variables are lining up to potentially let you have some good fishing. I think what we're really saying is the variables do matter, but you should still go fishing when you can go fishing. Yes, right? Like, like what's your slogan? El you're, eloquently you're stated. Never too busy to go fishing? Yeah, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too darn busy. Exactly. Yes, so sir. you go when you can go, not yeah. putting yourself in any danger ever, mm -hmm. but at the same time, like this – the full moon does look really good. It does. I was and, driving into it this morning. And that pre-front bite, too. The barometer's finally going to start moving. Those fish are going to be chewing for sure. This weather update was brought to you by our friends over at Reese Windows and Doors. They are Florida's leading window and door company with over 50 years in the business. They offer free installation on most windows and doors, and they install in just six weeks. They only use in-house installers, no freelance contractors, and their work comes with a double lifetime warranty, which means you never pay for a warranty when you sell your house, and that warranty transfers to the new owner, which adds value to your home. Visit ReeseWindows.com for more information. We've got Donald from Lutz on the line. He's, uh, I think he's got a fishing meeting today, your, your kayak club's meeting, right, Donald? What's up, Donald? Oh, yeah. Hey, good morning, guys. He's fishing today. Hope all is well with you. Oh, yeah, man. It's oh, another yeah, beautiful man. day. That's it. Hey, you know, you, you're talking about perfect days. Mm -hmm. um, when I when mm -hmm. I set up my uh, my outings with my kayak club, I look at the tides and soliners. But, however, you can't predict what the wind's going to do when you plan these a few weeks out. Right? Yeah. So, yep. I got some, some really perfect days as far as, like, tides and soliners and blah 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 and all of a sudden it's blowing 25. <laughs> that does make it challenging can you turn down your radio or the stream in the background i'm getting a little bit of an echo but uh uh definitely looked good today all the variables are lining up but uh it's not supposed to blow too much today uh where are you at that you're getting wind we'll go well we're no uh hopefully bay, we're going to bay pines uh by war war memorial park mm -hmm. launching at the canoe launch and there's some picnic tables afterwards. And I've got my uh, hot dogs, burgers, nice. cheeseburgers, grilling afterwards. So I know a few people that can't go uh, fishing are going to be stopping afterwards. So Nice. You know, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's going to be a lot of fun today. And uh, hopefully we'll catch them up. Uh, you know, we're going to use some soft plastics. I'm not keeping any fish, so nothing with treble hooks. Lot, I don't need to be stuck. <laughs> a lot of big jack schools are moving around Bay Pines right now definitely been exciting big schools or sh big jacks or both both a little really? bit of both. yeah yeah yesterday a, a pretty decent sized school of medium sized jacks moved through the pass and uh, a couple of days ago we had some uh, bigger fish move through as well so a lot of uh, and then the snook man just absolute tanks snooker back tanks moving around the pass you'll see 25 snook 20 of them are are like the schoolie size, the 18 to 26 inch fish. But then there's a few that have like remoras on them and yeah. scars down the side. They got shoulders. 
25 pound fish crazy <laughs> yesterday i saw one that made my knees weak <laughs> it was massive yeah so good luck out there donald and what are you throwing today what's going to be your lure of choice uh soft plastic paddle tails i i really love gambler um the uh the freshwater ones the uh white lightning it's the uh it's 3.75 on okay. a um striking uh fish uh redfish lure, uh, jig head nice i like that seawall that east seawall all those docks and those mangroves especially closer to the bridge hopefully uh you'll find them my friend yep that's that's great to hear about the snook that means our water is getting healthier yeah i got that right uh, I mean, knock on on wood and, and keep your fingers crossed. I think almost everything that you look at is pointing towards a healthier fishery right now. What's really cool that we're seeing on the water that everybody was concerned about in my world offshore was the kingfish. We're seeing juvenile kingfish. We had four throwback kingfish yesterday. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Catch and release kingfish. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Yeah, a lot of juvenile kingfish showing up, which is really cool. So pay attention to what you're catching and throw back those juvenile kings, and uh, it's pretty cool to see. So That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. All right, cool, guys. Have a great week, everyone. Stay safe and tight lines. Good, Good luck, luck buddy. Definitely. And then also the spade fish. Spade fish are back, too. Okay. Which, Were they yeah. gone? <laughs> totally gone. I knew nothing about spade fish. Yeah, they're they're a great amberjack bait. It's kind of like an angel fish. Some people yeah. call them an angel fish. Uh, they kind of look like sheep's head, but different body style. And uh, they were everywhere when I was a kid growing up. But around like 2013, 15, they just disappeared. And it's they're back. Now they're back. Strong. It's crazy. We'll be back too. Right after these messages. Remember, you can call us one 969 If you want to join the conversation, Real Animals Radio. We'll be right back. For the Bay Area's premier family boating resource, look no further than Pro Marine Performance. Good call, good call. I've been like, why can't they hear us? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Can they hear us through this on the... On the main show, yeah. Yeah, well, and on that too, right? No, not on the main show. Never? Break. It's never yeah. on that? Yeah, these are turned off completely. Okay. I didn't know if you switched the feed somehow. No. I don't have any control over this. Gotcha. That would be nice, though. Yeah, even if you could just be, like, tagged on somewhere. You would think. But, yeah, they keep everything in here locked down. Like, I can't even use these computers. I get it. Yeah. I could get permission to use these computers, but then they started telling me that I had to do this and this, and I can't access Facebook, and I'm like, then... Yeah. You, why? <laughs> yeah. Just use your... Yeah. Just use my laptops. What are we on? Real animals, Hubbard's, Real. Hubbard's Marina, and Captain Bill and Captain Bill. Bill. Okay. Oh, somebody asked, uh, what percentage, with all that said, and nature being the ultimate variable, what percentage would you give luck to it? True question. I think luck has a pretty large percentage to do it. That's that's my problem when people talk about fishing being a skill or a sport, is I really think luck has a pretty large part to do with it. Whereas like most true like sports, it comes down to skill and luck is a little bit there, but not as much in fishing. I mean, ultimately you could be doing everything right and that fish might just bite the next lure down. I feel like party boat fishing specifically kind of humbles you because like I've never, I can't tell you how many times like I've been fishing in a line of folks doing everything right, and the the little old lady down the rail from me catches the trophy fish, you know, or the little kid. You don't think maybe like there's some skill where they're not smaller, or they tied a loot knot and you didn't, or they're using a lighter hook, or. A... I think I think there's some skill. There's obviously a lot of skill to it, and practice makes perfect. It definitely will separate you. Like the more skillful practice anglers, and catch more fish, 100. percent But I think there's still a lot of luck to it. Uh, yeah. So percentage wise, if I had to put a number on it, I'd say it's 20 percent luck. I think, like you can get sideways in all like the technology advances and stuff. Mm-hmm. 
But man, I think we have to be careful because I think without luck, there's no reason to get out of bed in the morning, right? Yeah. Like if I knew that I could go catch nothing but True. 30 pound snook all day long. Why would you? Why would you? Like that makes it almost too easy. Yeah. And you want that, like that room for magic to happen. Yeah. Luck, magic, whatever you want to call it. Like to me, that's the reason to go. And that's what's funny, like uh, speaking of snook specifically, like on the dock, I can take a net full of shrimp and dump it in the water and the snook can... And then you drop down a hook with a shrimp on it. And nothing. Nothing. Yep. And it's like, whoa. Yep. And they actually, there was a study that they did where they uh, hooked up an ECG to someone's brain. And the same part of your brain lights up when you're fishing, when you're gambling. It's the same thing. It's, it's like a, it's like a, a hyper, a, yeah. a high almost, like a, yeah. like a, like yeah. euphoria. Yeah. You're, you're essentially pulling that lever on that, on that slot machine. No kidding. Are you going to get that bite? <laughs> yeah, we talk about that all the time. Like, That's true. That's yeah, a great point. Yeah, I have to believe in the magic part. Yeah. That's interesting. Bartow Ford Real Animals Radio on News Radio 970 WFLA. Captain Dylan Hubbard here from Hubbard's Marina. We've got Captain Travis Thompson from all Florida in the studio this morning, and we're chatting with you, talking, fishing, answering questions, and hearing your reports. Remember, you can join the conversation 1 800 969 9352. On break there, we had a great question on the live stream on our Real Animals Hubbard's Marina and Captain Dylan Hubbard Facebook pages. We are streaming live this morning, and uh, Big O brought up the question about, uh, with all that being said about nature and variables, what percentage of luck would you give to the equation as far as catching fish? And I think that was a really great question, uh, spurred an interesting point from Travis about how uh, the luck keeps you hooked, right? Yeah, if you're if you know if it's a guarantee, like if I could control all these variables and I know that I could go catch, yeah, what's what's the limit on snapper? Five five mangrove yeah. snapper this afternoon, or mm-hmm. every cast I knew that I'm going to catch a thirty pound snook. Yeah, why go? Yeah, like you if want you, the mystery you, and the luck. If you pulled out your calendar and you looked at all the variables and they all lined up on the fifteenth, and you went out on the fifteenth and you caught every single fish you wanted every cast, it, it wouldn't be fun. No, and I, I think sometimes, and, you know, I, I deal a lot on the hunting somebody's, side. Somebody's like, dude, that sounds awesome. <laughs> well, like on the hunting side, you can control those variables more because you can control where the food is. True. And on the fishing side, it's not like you're going, you, you could chum, mm-hmm. but it's not like you're putting a bait pile out and then intercepting an animal and en route to it or whatever. Yeah. And so, but I feel like sometimes people think, oh, it is that easy. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, there's days when it is shooting fish in a barrel for us, mm-hmm. snook season on the spawn or whatever. The reds Sometimes can, you're in the right spot at the right time. Yeah, but, man, it's also, like, if you don't have room for what I call magic, hope, whatever you want to call mm-hmm. it, like, yeah, that that is the whole fun of the sport, right? Yeah, amen to that. You take your kid out there, and you're doing everything right because you've been doing this for 30 years, and then next thing you know, he's got a... a big old redfish boat up on his snoopy pole <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, how did that happen like speaking of that he's been catching uh those uh uh those spade fish like crazy off the dock and he's loving that are you just putting them in a live well like like you, you said you use them yeah. as bait we we do for amberjack and amberjack okay. season is going to open up in may so come may 1st we're going to be putting them in in live wells but for now it's just a lot of fun because they fight so hard because of the shape yeah they fight like a snook but they won't break you off they won't wrap you around a piling they'll run by a piling but they won't wrap you in one so it's great for kids how big are we talking 
I mean, some spade fish. I've had a spade fish break me, break my fishing pole. Well, like a, a 40 pound class fishing pole. A big spade fish can break 60 pound tests. It's nuts. Wow. Yeah, they fight really hard. So the ones uh, we're catching are with a gold pinfish hook, you know? Okay. Yeah. They're so pinfish little, type sized. A little bigger than that, but they're so tall. They just fight so hard. But speaking of uh, just all the things coming together, we were talking about how that pre front. Uh, that pre-front bite, the full moon, everything lining up this weekend, the 44 hours out there. And uh, they they texted me from the Garmin inReach device, and they said uh, that last night they absolutely dusted the fish. They filled the whole big fish box up and had to pack fish twice with big mangrove snapper last night. So having to pack oh, fish in front of that price moon. is, yeah, that's, that's notable because normally we fish all night and pack fish once, uh, like mid-morning. Uh, after fishing all night and through sunrise so they had to pack fish twice overnight is uh impressive so dang yeah and now we've got a, a little bit of a run from that snapper fishing area to where we're gonna grouper fish today on that 44 hour and uh hopefully we're gonna run across those wahoo again are you, you troll in between yeah yeah last trip they caught or they hooked four wahoo and uh landed one uh, but this trip, we've got four or five really experienced anglers with some really good tackle on the back of the boat. So I'm hoping for big numbers. Oh, man, that'd be so cool, right? Yeah, yeah, what I'm a great excited. bag that is. Oh, yeah. A lot of big wahoo, a lot of big red grouper. We got a lot of trigger fish out there right now. Some big fat mangroves. Yellowtails have been biting well. There's supposedly some big knots of blackfin tuna. We haven't found the biomass yet, but they're pretty concentrated so i feel like once we find them it'll be a big catch awesome yeah and amberjack are open in may 1st so that's a nice surprise as well so lots to do and see offshore right now and the weather the weather is so nice <laughs> so nice less than one foot today like you drew it up yeah i mean almost it's almost too nice have i mean uh, i've experienced it offshore where it's like a lake and you don't have an anchor heading you put the anchor down and the weight of the anchor line actually pulls the boat forward over the anchor it's a little bit of a challenge. It's honestly, it's a challenge for if the bite is slow because yeah. when it's really nice, because mm -hmm. then you got to make up crazy excuses, like like <laughs> like exactly that. Yeah, man. Like the it weather is too, too nice today. <laughs> all the conditions were too perfect, yeah. and I just like I don't know how to interact with that. So. <laughs> <laughs> they turn and look at you. <laughs> Wait, what did I he say? <laughs> did he say the weather's too nice? <laughs> Who hired this guy? <laughs> I get it, yeah. But exactly. if he's, I mean, it's all in delivery as a guide. Yeah. They teach you that. It's all in delivery. How, it's not what you say. It's how you say it's it. It's how you deliver the excuse. I tell everybody that. <laughs> not so much related to excuses, but anything. <laughs> it's not what you say. It's how you say it. We'll be right back on the other side. Join the conversation. 1-800-969-9352. Real Animals Radio. We'll be right back. <laughs> Dealers, WFLA. I had a I had a client one time and we had a it was after a front and these snook were stacked up in this little like cut. Yeah. I, dude, I could not get them to eat. Yeah. I was like, you know the problem is we just there's too many fish. There's too many fish there. And they were, they looked at me and they're like, what are this guy's on? <laughs> That's funny. We did get him bite finally. Ooh. Wow, the twelve hour night snapper smoked them too. Really? Jeez. And they got a cobia. Look at that. Oh my gosh, man. Pile of fish. You gonna show them the picture? Mm -hmm. Twelve hour night snapper. Smoked them. God, that's a pile of fish. Yeah, it is. The forty four hour can't send photos from that far offshore. The in reach doesn't let you send photos, just <laughs> no. text. Yeah. Gosh. 
collection of fat mangroves. Oh my gosh, dude! From near near shore fishing. That's off the forty four, or that's, that's off, off the twelve hour. Oh my god! Yeah. Yeah, you just said the forty four can't send images. Mm -hmm. Got a cobia. Oh. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. You gotta love it when the uh, when the like your guys are fired up over it. Yeah, like that tells you it's a good trip. That almost got me too. What? The splish splash. Oh yeah. Have you binged the new Taylor Swift album yet? No. No. <laughs> but how funny was that shirt I sent you? Dude, so freaking hilarious. Dude, Dom Mazzetti is the man. I want to be like him when I grow up. So funny, man. Speaking of influencers, he's got like 4 million followers on Instagram. Crazy. Influencers are wearing me out right now. Yeah. On, on Right to Hunt and Fish. Because, like, getting them to care. Yeah, is like, I don't, I don't want to say they don't care. I don't think they understand like how important something like that is to them. We lose right to hunt fish. It doesn't affect Hubbard's Marina next year, but in five years, it will affect it. Mm -hmm. 100%. I don't think people understand like the practice equals luck, somebody said on there. Practice equals luck. I like that. Um, Captain Brian, one of our captains, is uh, pretty funny. He has uh, like the the dry humor, the dad jokes down to a science. He's he's hilarious, but uh, he always says the person who's going to catch the most fish has the bait in the water the most. It's, it's true. Yeah, it sounds silly, but like I've noticed that the guy that's the best fisherman no. that I know. He, I bet you on a trip, like watching him and my buddies or my dad, I bet you he throws over four hours, six hours. I bet you he throws half to double the number of casts that other people will throw. Yeah. His bait's always in the water. <coughs> always in the water. Yeah. Um, same guy asked you to describe a 44-hour trip. Mm -hmm. You see that? Yeah. Caught a bass after losing my purple booyah on a log. By the way, booyah is one of the great bait names of all time. Yeah, it is. That's solid, right? Mm -hmm. And Kevin Van Dam has the greatest bass fishing name ever. Like his name, yeah. Kevin Van Dam. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah. KVD. It's yeah. even got a cool nickname. I know. Strike King is a pretty good bait name too. Yeah, gambler, gambler's good. Mm -hmm. Like boats or lure, like that's that's fun. That's what uh, Donald oh, what was talking using. about. Like it's a name that you wish you to come up with. Yeah. Have you heard of uh, Vic Blends, that barber that does? Uh, he's huge on TikTok, uh, but he just did a he started a podcast and he had Tom Brady on it. And he's a barber, and he like talks to people while he's giving them haircuts. His podcast name is Deep Cuts. Love I was that. Like, oh, dude, we're back, Barto for Real Animals Fishing Show. Talking on the fishing this morning on News Radio 970 WFLA. If you're looking for a affordable roof, check out our friends at Affordable Roofing Systems. Whether you need a shingle, metal, tile, or flat roof. Our friends at Affordable Roofing Systems are your safest choice for repairs or replacements. With over three decades of roofing experience, let Affordable Roofing Systems guide you through this important process. They are defined by integrity, respect, and honesty, and they have a personalized and professional approach to doing business. Call 888-397-ROOF for your free estimate today. 
or visit them online at affordableroofingflorida.com. We've got Captain Travis Thompson in studio this morning talking fishing and uh, all things inshore, near shore, and off. Plus, we're going to be talking some conservation stuff today, too. We've got the right to hunt and fish coming up. It's coming on, up soon. On the ballot in November. Vote yes on two. Best thing you guys can do, like I'm assuming everybody listening to this would vote yes on, 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 on that amendment. The right to hunt and fish. Do you want the right to hunt and fish? But the best thing is, like on an amendment like that, you got to get 60% of the people to vote for it. Yeah. And like, so your neighbor that doesn't fish or hunt. You got to talk them into it. Yeah. Like, and there's, I mean, there's, there's a tax. We've talked about that before. We did a great mm-hmm. podcast with Salt Strong on that. Yeah. Like, and um, there's a tax on it, but there's also the conservation value. Like how much. If, if somebody's going out and just kayaking or pontoon boating or jet skiing, oh, jet skiing, <laughs> if the they're doing worst. that kind of stuff, like how many of those boat ramps were paid for by by fishermen dollars? Because there's yeah. like there's like money earmarked from the feds that have to be used for boat ramp maintenance and boat ramp installation yep. um, that we pay for in our fishing licenses and our in our tackle purchases and stuff like Dingle Johnson dollars. Yep, right? Dingle Johnson dollars. That's exactly right. Nice. Ding- I remembered something. There you go. Yeah. So I- anyway, it's critically important that we pass that. And uh, man, the best thing you guys can do is make sure you're talking about it, telling people, because it's crazy how many people you say, yeah, right, hunting fish is on the ballot this year, and it's not one of the sexier amendments. It's not one of the one that gets all the press. And people skip over the amendments, I oh, feel like. Man, yeah. They go in there, and they're like, oh, yeah, but president, and then they might vote for a few other things, but they don't really go through the whole ballot. So this is one of those things that will be towards the bottom of the ballot, maybe on the back side of the ballot, because it's going to be one of the amendments that are only for the state. It's not a nationwide thing, yep. so you have to – Kind of the state specific stuff is one of the last sections on that ballot. And you got to so make sure you, you flip it over and you. I tell people all the time, man, like, I, I don't love to talk politics, but like, you have to know the local stuff. Yeah. Like, how many times have you gone and voted? I do it all the time. I don't know who my county commissioners are. Or What's what. crazy to me, like, as a, as a business owner, operator, as I've gotten more involved in the finer details, it is mind-numbing and mind-boggling how much local politics will affect the minutia of your everyday life. Like so many things here in Pinellas County that you're experiencing or that you might have issue with are really stemming from your local city and county municipality government and management. And uh, it's crazy how important it is. Even even the state level, mm-hmm. your state representative has so much influence over what happens in their yeah. district. And for you, I mean, I know them now and I pay attention mm-hmm. closely to it now. But for years, like I was just like, oh, whatever, you know, the yeah. party that I am, just check that box. Like that's obviously the right person to, to vote for. That man, you better know who what's going on there. And and there's primaries coming up in some of those. Like, yeah. so even if you're party loyalty, like you have decisions to make there. It's worth doing some cursory research on. Yeah, because the party loyalty is out the window (laughs) nowadays. you got to kind of look at these people and figure out what they're about. Well, and that's what I'm saying. Like, even within a party, Mm -hmm. everyone that identifies the same, and I'm I'm saying both parties or or even NPA, like, you could find wide swaths of difference between candidate A and candidate C in what they believe, how they view. And for me, you know, my kids are older. Like, I'm I'm kind of a conservation single-issue guy. Like, that's the thing that drives me. Mm Mm-hmm. It's stark in some cases, like how that drastic that is. You you've got younger you've got a younger kid, so mm-hmm. like to you, like if education is your biggest deal, it might be stark there too. I don't know. Yeah. I'm saying like he, I would go dig into some of that stuff locally because that's going to affect you way more on your day to day life. It's worth looking at for sure. But it's crazy. right to hunt and fish, please make sure people know about it. Like that's yeah. the thing. Talk to your friends. Uh, Amendment two. It's going to be the Florida Amendment two. The right to hunt and fish. We want to get that passed. We want people to vote yes on two. So that way we can get the right to hunt and fish added to the Florida Constitution. We added the link uh, to the live stream here. It's uh, hubbardsmarina.com. When you're on our website at hubbardsmarina.com, you can hit info. And the very top is the right to hunt and fish. It's also on allfla.org. It's also on florida-guides.com. We put it on all of the websites and uh, we're working to add it to the Real Animals website as well. So definitely you can find the information right there. Um, and did Josh include the pledge there? Yeah, the pledge. And Josh put on our page as well the uh, the video that you were talking about with Salt Strong. Uh, perfect. So so if you get time, like, check out that link. That, that's on the Hubbard's page? Yep. 
check out that link. You can watch that video that's got background because you, there's misinformation out there about, oh, it'll affect the net ban. That's baloney. Mm -hmm. um, J Dylan and I wouldn't be in on board with it if it did that. CCA wouldn't be on board with it if it did that. But the other thing you can do is take that pledge. There's a pledge on there, and you can you can sign up for that. And we found that people that sign up and say they're going to show up and vote for something, 70% yeah. more likely to show up and vote for it. That's important. So it's, get it's your friends you. and family to take that pledge. Big deal. Yeah, send them to the link. It, it'll teach you all about it, show you all the information. The podcast really goes in detail as well. So check it out, all Florida, allflorida.org uh, uh, forward slash R2FH, and the same thing with the Hubbardsmarina.com. It's the same R2FH on Hubbards Marina? Yes, sir. And Florida-Guides, that's our? I believe so, yes. Okay. I would have to double check. The I know, I know it's the R2FH. I just didn't know. I can't remember Florida. It's Florida-Guides. Florida Florida yep. Okay. You got it. Florida-Guides.com. Yep, and lots of we're, if you got an organization out there or something else, we're happy to help them. Yeah, get we that can, information on their site. You can put it on your website too. <laughs> <laughs> Call us. We've, we've got a Josh. <laughs> he can make things happen. Dylan's guys have been Magical. incredible on that stuff, man. Putting yeah. it together and making it happen so fast. Like we've got a great team. We talked about it on a like a Monday night or Tuesday night, and by Thursday it was up. Yeah, and it looks great. It's amazing. Van Hubbard, we've got Captain Van Captain Hubbard. Van. Yeah, what's going on, man? How are you this morning, Captain Van? Oh, I'm doing great, boys. Doing great. Watching a beautiful sunrise. Amen to that. It has absolutely been spectacular lately. Beautiful mornings, for sure. Little, little nice cool. to have good weather. No wind for a change. Amen to that. Say it again for the people in the back. <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice to have no wind for a change where we can get out on the water and enjoy ourselves. Amen. So what are you seeing down there? Well, um, fishing is picking up. The tarpon and everything are showing up. Uh, people are showing up. Uh, it's uh, it's going good. The, uh, the thing nice. I want to point out to people that with what y'all are talking about, either get involved or take what you get and yep. don't complain because uh, if you're not actively involved in the fisheries management and the hunting and everything else, whether you're whether you want to do it now or not, you won't be able to, or it'll be even more severely restricted, and uh, your kids and grandkids won't be able to if it doesn't get protected because everything has a way of getting messed up these days. Yeah. Amen to that. Ca Captain Van, I think one of the first times I remember seeing you, I, did, I didn't know you at the time, but was at a FWC commission meeting over a regulation, and it's like I, I, I've gotten now to the point doing this stuff where I like to say – you got to spend some days working inside if you want to do the stuff outside. And that's, I mean, that's how Dylan and I got to know each other years ago is ran into him at an FWC commission meeting. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's kind of weird how few people you see in those rooms. And I get it. It's hard. You got to take days off of work. You got to miss days on the water. You got to, like, it, it's a difficult Tough lift. To there. But man, like, that's the stuff that lets us do the stuff that we love to do. Amen to that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, Dylan and I had conversations and other people, uh, you know, get involved so that you know what you're doing and what you're talking about, because you you can work much better, more, much more effectively from the inside than you can from the outside. You got that right. <laughs> we, we appreciate you guys that, that, that kind of came before us. Not that you're not doing it anymore, but like we get to stand on your shoulders now and, and do this stuff. Yeah. So, Well, literally, he he forced me into this I, I have him to blame for my positions that i'm in now because excellent uh, i was in a conversation with him I, we'll, we'll call it a conversation it was more like an argument and he basically was like you should learn what you're talking about before you start talking about it i was like i know what i'm talking about was he right <laughs> he was right i was wrong <laughs> <laughs> and uh he he inspired me to go to the marine recreational education program and things have spiraled downhill since then <laughs> or uphill it depends how on how you look at it <laughs> if you ask my wife it's downhill <laughs> <laughs> so thanks man i appreciate it buddy <laughs> it, it's done it's done so much to help protect our fishing and fisheries um you both have had a big impact and are having a big impact and thank you for it uh, uh, we thank appreciate you, you hey are we gonna see you at icast yes I'll be there. Nice. Awesome. Travis and I both will have a booth. Thursday. Yeah, the Florida Guides Association will have a booth, and we'll be right next to our partners and friends at All Florida. So All Florida and Florida Guides Association, you can catch us at ICAST. Just yeah, and we'll be talking right to Fish and Hunt everywhere at ICAST. We're yes. working on that with We're ASA. We're going to have QR and, codes. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. So. It's going to have hats. 
<laughs> well, I don't know about that, but <laughs> it'd be cool. I love how quiet it got. <laughs> sure, Dylan, we'll have that. Radio silence. <laughs> Well, we appreciate you, Van. Thanks for calling in. Great to hear the tarpon are back. You guys still seeing a bunch of kingfish, or they they they're still around, right? We've had a few come by. Um, still getting some mackerel pretty consistently, but uh, the weather and the kingfish just uh, haven't matched up. Yeah, I'm really really interested. Well, I was mentioning it earlier. We've started to see a lot of juvenile kingfish, which is unique. We haven't seen that in a while. Uh, and it seems to be like the, the, the pressure is building still on the kingfish. I'm just really hoping and praying they stay around a while and we see a really big push of a lot of fish. And I, I feel like we're on the doorstep to that, but we haven't really seen a ton of fish. So I'm hoping they stay around a while. Yeah, let's, let's point out to our mackerel fishermen to be careful and look close at those mackerel because uh, you'll be yeah. surprised about one out of every 10 or 15 will be a little kingfish so be careful you don't want to get in trouble yeah that's what dylan was saying like that yeah we want to be careful to make sure we're letting those kingfish go as well but great point i appreciate it captain van thanks for giving us a shout have a great day see you buddy take care buddy always a pleasure to hear from our friend captain van hubbard also want to make sure we give a shout out to our friends over at Power Pucks, the world's first power supply trolling motor quick release bracket. It eliminates the need for exterior power plugs, which can snag lines, corrode easily, or just be an eyesore cluttering up your deck. Go to PowerPucks, P-W-R-P-U-X.com and find out for yourself why so many of the pros are making the switch over to Power Pucks. Also keep in mind as well, we've got the Bartow Ford real animals fishing conversation coming up again may 14th super excited about that we had uh, eric bachnick from near lure lined up but unfortunately a conflict arose with the date long story short captain mike's gonna find another guest and we'll have eric join us again at a future conversation but definitely mark it down because another heavy hitter like Eric Bachnick from Mirror Lure will be there. So May 14th, Bartow Ford, 6 to 8 p.m. You don't want to miss out. There's going to be Real Animal Swag, the Ingle Cooler giveaways, the Bull Bay Rod giveaways. It's always a good time. Plus, the highlight, the free food. I was going to say, Silver you Ring didn't Day. mention Silver Ring. Like, oh. that's still a thing, right? Oh, it's still a thing. I, it's worth the drive to Bartow for the Silver Ring. Listen, Day. gang, I live in Polk County, so it's not as far of a drive for me. But Bartow is still 20, 25 minutes. Yeah that's a great event it is like i went over there kind of you go to sometimes like an event at a mm -hmm. at a car dealership or whatever and you're like it's 14 people and a mm -hmm. guy standing in front of a truck talking on something this is like they clean cars out of the showroom and put chairs in yeah. like it's a big deal it's a and big deal it, it, they really i mean they it's also not mailed in yeah like like mike and these guys like they, they take it very seriously the the product mm -hmm. they're putting out there to like to me, I was like, holy crap, this is so good. And, there, I mean, there was a good crowd there, yeah. but also, like, there was room. Yeah, it's fun. Show up, man. It's, it's a great it. event. Yeah, May 14th, 6 to 8 p.m., Bartow Ford. We'll hopefully hear from you on the other side. Remember, you can join the conversation, 1-800-969-9352. Real Animals Radio. We'll be right back. <laughs> It was literally, it was a Facebook conversation, and we were talking about something federal fisheries related, and I was t talking to somebody, and he was like, hey, you should probably do some research on this. I was like, listen, <laughs> here, I know what I'm talking about. I didn't know what I was talking about. Yeah. And he was like, you should take this education class, and I was like, listen, man, F you. <laughs> I'm educated. <laughs> and then I took that class, I was like, well... I was not educated. So when you say people uh, that we follow behind Captain Van and people like that, it's a hundred percent true. Oh my God! Is, like Scott Moore, he is precipitated. Scott might be listening, but there's so many guys out there like that that like. Yeah. It was funny speaking of Scott Moore. Um, I was at the gym and uh, this guy approached me he's like hey hey talking about fishing you're doing yep i've been doing that and then he starts talking about charter fishing 
He's like, yeah, yeah, my, my buddy over here, he, he's a big fisherman. He, he fishes all the time. And I was like, okay. And that guy comes up and he starts talking to me. He's like, yeah, yeah, I, I go fishing with uh, the legend out of uh, Anna Maria. And I was like, oh, here comes the Scott Moore story. <laughs> Called that. <laughs> yeah. And then he launches into, he fishes with Justin. And, okay. Uh, he remembered, he, I guess he used to fish with Scott and like started fishing with Scott right at the end. And then started fishing with Justin when he was like uh, 18, and he's fishing with Justin ever since. Wow. Yeah. And he probably he, went with Justin to like give Scott's son a chance or something. Like. Well, I remember. I think back then, the way Scott told the story, I think to Mike or someone, I forget. I I was in a room when the story was being told. As Scott was so busy, he was turning away people. Justin got his license, and Scott started throwing him trips. Overflow uh, type yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and then people started fishing with Justin. It kind of like at the marina, we see it all the time. It's like the experienced, long-term captain will sometimes other people will fish with them, and they won't like it as much as fishing with the younger, run-and-gun, hungry captain, you know? Just a different style of fishing. And, and a lot of times, like, that guy's just not a known quantity yet. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. And we've all, we, it's the gambling. It is the gambling. Mm -hmm. It really is. But, like, mm -hmm. man, if you can... You know this. You've been on a boat enough, like, hunting, fishing, no matter what. When I've got clients in the boat, like, you're entertaining people for the day. Scott Moore is on the line. <laughs> I told you he'd call in. <laughs> That's funny. Talk about legends. We yeah. just line them all up this morning. We get Lisa Fitzgerald to call. Like, <laughs> we'll, we'll be in there. <laughs> That's funny. But those people, like, they had a tremendous influence. Like, I grew up in a conservation-minded house. My dad worked for DEB, but... Your dad worked for DEP? Yeah. I didn't know that. 50 years. Holy Four, 40 hell. 46 years, something like that. That's crazy. But, like, I would pick up Scott Moore's Snook Fishing Secrets, or I'd hear it down to Booger Grand. What, what was the name of his book? Wasn't it just, like, Snook? I thought it was Captain Scott Moore's Snook Fishing Secrets. But then hmm. Frank Sargent wrote the Snook book. Oh, is that what it was? And S Scott was mentioned in that a lot. Gotcha. Phil Chapman was mentioned in that a lot. And then, like, to meet those guys, and they're just... You see them walk to a podium and speak on something that you're walking to the podium to speak on. It's like, holy, these guys yeah. are putting the work in. Yeah. That's cool. Man. It's interesting. Yeah, it's really interesting. Mike Elfenbein said Travis should get an Emmy. <laughs> Elfenbein should go shoot some turkeys. He's out there. Today's, tomorrow's the end of it. Oh, really? Yeah. We're back, Bartow for Real Animals Radio. I want to give a shout out to our friends over at Relentless and Perpetual Edge Knives, the first in the world's first self sharpening knife that sharpens as it cuts. Ultra hard carbide, never rust type hanging blade with true great glass reinforced ABS handle on a knife that is perfectly balanced and comes in five great models. Take the work out of filleting a pile of fish and get your relentless knives today. Relentlessknivesusa.com to find out for yourself why this is the knife all the pros are talking about. Speaking of pros, speaking of legends, we've got Captain Scott Moore on the line this morning. How are you doing, Captain Scott? Hey, Captain Scott. Good morning. I van got me spiked up here on the on the Kingfish talking. Yes, sir. Uh, you know this this spring, you know, with the weather, of course, we finally got some calm down. I wouldn't want to be trying to sail this morning. I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, it, Sailing's it, the worst. It definitely, it's flat right now. But we had that little push. You know, we had those fronts, the weather. Mm -hmm. And on the back side of them, we were catching a bunch of really small, immature kings, which is good. You know, hopefully um, that's going to materialize. <clears throat> I did catch one about 30 pounds last week on the back side of the front and it, it got slower and slower and uh the last couple of days you had to you had to run pretty far to mm. do anything the yeah. way it was with them um, interesting inshore inshore is very interesting in our area um there's a lot of positive things and there's some negative things sarasota bay to the mouth of Manti river we have an influx of what was called lingvia. We 
Mm-hmm. As yep. Floridians and fishermen, they call it gumbo, but it is horrible. And uh, we're having to deal with that. In some areas, it's impossible to even fish the flats. Wow. That's crazy. That makes it difficult yeah, for it sure. Is crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. But the fishing's good. A lot of fish around the passes. That's awesome. Um, uh, so, uh, and the bait is here. You know, it's a good spring, good spring fishing. And uh, just pick your tides, and you can have a really good time right now. Fishing. Yes, sir. And the water is so clean and clear on those high tides right now. It's crazy. We're seeing the bottom in like 25, 30 feet as we're making our way wow. near shore and offshore. It's, it's absolutely spectacular. So are you guys seeing that down in Anna Maria? I know it's gorgeous yeah, down there so, almost yeah, the all the time. Clear. The skyway from the skyway to Anna Maria, uh, Bean Point, uh, um, Egmont is crystal, crystal clear. Yeah. And there's a few scattered laid up tarpon starting to show up. Whoa. That's not unusual. I'm sure there's some around the Skyway and up up in the bay there. Yeah. But, uh, uh, I'm I'm seeing a few fish starting to show up. So are you seeing the same? S- Sorry, are you, are you seeing the same snook that like Dylan is? Like you're seeing those those schools starting to move in with the 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 big the big breeder females with them. There, our big fishery here has been really really weird. Um, I think they dropped in the passes mm-hmm. and went deep. We did not have the, the larger fish on the flats this spring. Mm-hmm. We had one little push early, and uh, we did not. Now, there might be some late fish coming. I've seen it where May was really good, okay, yeah. with decent fish. But there's plenty of small fish, plenty yeah. of action. So, We've um, seen, I, fish- I would say, the biggest snook recently, like in the last month or so. Uh, bigger snook than I've seen since like before they built uh, blew up the Johns Pass Bridge in like 2007 when they blew it up with dynamite we saw these big 50 inch snook float to the surface like since then I haven't seen snook like this it's crazy some of these fish that are cruising around under the dock with no cares in the world like they know there's no shot you're gonna catch them (laughs) they just come up and laugh at you it's crazy they've got like four or more on them uh-huh. And, yeah, in that deeper water. We just, I think we had so much weather. We had a pretty good, the fish didn't hold. They kept going. Yeah. A lot of the fish, those bigger fish went to the passes. That's the only thing that I can see. Um, what, and there could be more coming. I yeah. mean, uh, I'm not getting any reports in the river, but, you know, you never know. I've seen a, I've seen late on the big fish, a little later push like May. Well, we, we appreciate hearing from you, Scott. We're unfortunately up against the break, but always a pleasure no hearing from you, brother. Good everybody. Yep. Take care, Captain All Scott. You See you, you buddy. Always a pleasure hearing from the myth, the man, the myth, the legend, Captain Scott Moore. Definitely more to come on the other side. Real Animals Radio, we will be right back. <laughs> The last real animals thing I went to at uh, mm-hmm. Barton Ford. Yeah, Captain that, Scott was, was there. Oh, and he, he did was a speaker. Uh, yeah, he was okay. a speaker, and he talked about. He said, "I'm going to teach you how snook fishing is like deer hunting." And I don't remember the points, but man, like I could listen to him talk about fishing. Like, man, guy's a legend. Yeah, he's awesome. You think he's caught every snook in like in that, that stretch of time <coughs> like when he's touched it? It's probably a, a, some part of its family tree. <laughs> <laughs> he, him or Justin has touched it. Yeah. Huh. Nice. Open oh, Mind sent me a, a fishing report. Did you see it? Mm-hmm. He texted to you? Yeah. That's his son, I assume. Yeah. Yeah, his son's eat up with fishing. He's a he's a mate on a charter boat. Oh, that's down cool. there. Or was I, I don't know if he still is, but he was. My, Mike has actually eat up with fishing. Like he used to run the. Uh, I can't remember the tournament, but it was a, it was a big Miami based tournament. Really. Yeah, Mike used to run that <laughs> like, when he lived there.
He's he's got to be done turkey hunting because he's he's killed like or he's had people kill a bunch of turkeys this year and he's got to be he's got to be toast on it. The Met tournament. He just commented. The Met tournament. Hmm. Oh. The Metro Miami tournament. Yeah. That's cool. Man, Josh did a really good job on this Hubbard's Marina site, too. Yeah, he did. I hadn't seen that one yet. It's beautiful. <laughs> Largest free fishing tournament. Anyway, you always think of Mike as like an Everglades guy or like a like a hunting guy. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know he fished until like five years ago. He's like, yeah, dude, I used to. Like... He doesn't go anywhere without a fishing pole. Keeps one in the trunk. Yeah. The Met was huge, Bobby said. Yeah, like, I think it may have been the biggest free tournament in the United States or the world or something. Like, it, it's it's a big deal. I wonder what Bobby's building right now. Yeah, Captain Bobby Woodard, y'all. Like, that dude. It's embarrassing to be friends with him. I honestly don't want my wife to be friends with him and his wife because yeah. then she's going to, like, have a list of stuff. Wait. Wait, this we guy build our whole house. Yeah, this guy just built like two different houses and a boat. Why can't you do that? Yeah, because I don't carries, have any talent at he all. He carries an outboard engine and spare parts in his truck. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Look at the absurdity of that. Like he built his own roof. Yeah, he re-roofed himself. I, <laughs> it's crazy. I'm just like, come on, man. He built a barn and then built a boat in that barn. It's like one of those, like, the world's most interesting man commercials. <laughs> That's exactly what it's like. He built a barn and then built a boat in that barn. <laughs> you could book a charter with him, and if the boat has problems, he'll build you another one. Yeah, just off the to the side. <laughs> oh, my gosh, dude. That's like one of those guys you go deep into the Everglades with and like have no concern whatsoever. We're definitely getting home. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know that I've ever met anyone quite as handy as Bobby. Never. I know some really handy people, too. Yeah. But they, but, all have, handy. but they all have specific handiness. Like I know people that are really better, like, mechanics. mechanics. Yeah, so we're better at builders, but no one that has this... That's a mechanic for... builder and fiberglass person and tile person and... Yeah. Can build a shower. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And also, he's a good fisherman. Yeah. Like, ridiculous. I, I've never seen anything like it. And he'll, he'll like post a picture of that giant pole barn. He'll be like, oh, I'm sorry, it's such a mess. And I'm like, dude, that looks. We I, hate, I won't even we send hate you, a, you, Bobby. <laughs> yeah, I won't even send you a picture of my garage. Like, <laughs> yeah, my garage is embarrassing. I've got the nice rod racks on the ceiling, but then I've got rods, you know, stuck everywhere yeah. and nets and like, it's just. <laughs> yep. Not Bobby. <laughs> <coughs> Where's Mike today? Uh, softball, I believe. Ah. I believe. I didn't know if he was turkey hunting. I forget what he was doing, honestly. He texted me this morning early, so I'm pretty sure it was softball. Gotcha. I was scared to ask him. <laughs> forget, forget why you were gone today. Mm, it looks gray outside. It's supposed to be totally clear today. Is it? Yeah. Maybe it's just the tint of these windows. Yeah. I'm looking through double windows. Let me look at the internet so I can see what's happening outside. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of WFLA AM, its staff, management, or parent company, iHeartMedia Incorporated. 
Welcome to the Bartow Ford Real Animals Radio Show, your weekly voyage into Florida fishing. Presented by Hubbard's Marina, hosted by Captain Mike Anderson and Captain Dylan Hubbard. You know how I know our show is pretty good? There's a disclaimer. That, oh. that makes me very proud. Really? Very proud of that. Yeah. There's a disclaimer before you start talking. I feel like you made it in life. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, we don't know what he's going to say. Doesn't have anything to do with us. Here you go. <laughs> it's such a wild card. We're going to go ahead and give you a disclaimer up front. Captain Dylan Hubbard from Hubbard's Marina. We got Captain Travis Thompson in studio from all Florida chatting fishing this morning for the Bartow Ford Real Animals Radio Show on News Radio 970 WFLA. But... We have nothing to do with them. <laughs> we do not speak for them, as the disclaimer, as the disclaimer makes covered. perfectly clear. Uh, also want to give a shout out to our friends at Ace Heating and Cooling, who are brave enough to partner with us. For over 20 years now, Ace Heating and Cooling has been a name you can trust in the heating and air conditioning business in Hillsborough County. Chris Myers and his guys service all brands. They do residential and commercial repairs, maintenance and full replacements. They send out technicians, not salesmen, because they try to build that long-lasting customer relationship to hold up over time. Call 813-657-8818 or look them, on, look them up online at brandonac.net and find out for yourself why Ace Heating and Cooling is the easy choice for the Real Animals Fishing Team. Chris Myers is a great dude. Really good dude. I think Chris, Chris forgive me if I'm wrong, but I think Chris, cat. I think he killed his first duck with me. That's cool. I think he killed his first duck with me years ago. Ironic. I've known him, like, and I've known him through his cousin, who's a mutual, obviously mutual friend of him. Mm -hmm. This is his cousin. Family. But uh, then I saw that he was he was working with you guys. I was like, man, that's that's freaking awesome because yeah. he really is. You won't find anybody that says a bad thing about Chris. Yeah, that's awesome. Good people. I feel like that happens a lot. I'll, I'll, I'll mention somebody in Travis. Like, oh yeah, he's a super cool dude. Yeah, he killed his first duck <laughs> with me. I'm like, what? <laughs> like everybody in the whole state. You yeah, have, you have a huge duck hunting operation. What? How many people did you take hunting this year? Oh man, don't hold me to that number, but it was multiple hundreds. That's crazy. Like, I know it's like six hundred, seven hundred. Like, like it. Wow. A lot of people come through our duck hunting stuff. That's cool. Duck ranching. You duck got a ranching. cool name for it. Yeah, too. you can find us online. No, no G though. No G. It's I N. We got a. We've got the coolest logo I've seen. Like it's. It's. Pretty it is dope. pretty legit. It's pretty dope. I do like your duck ranch and logo. Yeah. It's funny. Funny Instagram account too. Yeah. We, we. Always some shenanigans. Always shenanigans there. Yeah, for sure. Also, we've got great weather. Absolutely beautiful. We're on the front side of a little cold front. We've got a full moon settling in the area. We're coming up to Old Salt's King of the Beach weekend. Going to be a blast. Lots of good stuff going on in our fishery right now, inshore, near shore, offshore. Spring is in the air. The fish are chewing. It is a good time to get out there and enjoy this clean, clear water and absolutely stellar fishing right now. Do you know about the white butterfly thing? Yeah, yeah, the white butterfly. Did you, did you the white, yeah, did you see the white butterflies? Like, no. I guess it, for me it was about a week ago, two weeks ago. I haven't seen them yet. I was, drive, I was driving. What I'm not looking forward to is the love bugs. Oh, yeah brutal oh yeah but i have this other kind of crazy theory that heavy love bug season correlates to big snook hmm. summer interesting it's anecdotal there's no science behind that but i'm i like witchcrafty stuff a little bit there yeah. you know what i mean like the magical mm -hmm. stuff like yeah sure okay you get a heavy love bug season i'll i'll sign off on that if we get there has to be an upside yeah there has to so be the upside, upside is <laughs> you guys take this to, to, to heart the upside is if you get a lot of love bugs you're gonna have a really good snook bite that year okay. Well, that makes me at least look optimistic, up right? Like, yeah. And well, everybody was talking yesterday about that radar blow up. Did you see that? Uh. -uh. So, uh, Mike's weather page, uh, uh, Dennis, uh, uh, I forget. Phillips. His yeah, Dennis Phillips. A couple other big Mets were talking about that radar blow up. If you are looking at the radar this time of year, you'll sometimes see these huge spikes, and it looks like a bomb went off, like a mushroom cloud, and it's uh, actually radar signatures of either. Flocks of birds, yeah, migratory but e birds, but even bugs. Really? Yeah. Sometimes. That's awesome. Yeah. Sometimes really thick clouds of bugs will be picked up on the radar. So there was this huge one out, like just uh, just west of like uh, Coral Springs area, uh, North Miami, 
and uh, just absolutely huge radar spike. And it, it made the news like pretty heavily. And uh, I see them occasionally on the radar. It's always interesting, but it's nuts that a flock of birds that big can be picked up on the radar. And it's kind of cool, too, because it, it explodes outward. Yeah. Like, usually they, they go into a ring. I didn't see the one you're yeah. talking about, but usually... It's the, a it, ring. It, it was it, a ring. It, it, yeah, mm-hmm. you'll see them. So it, it usually indicates they're leaving a roost, mm-hmm. and they're all going in different directions yeah. outward from it. And we start to see that firsthand in John's Pass this time of year when those uh, those crows will make it out there to uh, the pass, and there'll be thousands of them following all the bugs. It's really interesting. You, you see it... You see it with waterfowl, ducks, mm-hmm. like, like, but there's lots of migratory birds. Mm-hmm. White pelicans, I've seen it do, like, because white pelicans will actually go and sit mm-hmm. in a cow pasture that's flooded. Oh, You'll really? Have tens of thousands of them sit in a cow pasture. Really? Night. Yeah, like, it looks like it snowed out there. Really? And and then they all get up in the morning and leave. Huh. And so you would get that radar type signature on that. That's interesting. It's really fascinating. Yeah, I've seen uh, white pelicans, of course, quite a bit. But normally we see them on, like, sandbars or, like, grass flats. But there will only be, like, a big, big gathering is only a couple, maybe, like, a hundred. No, man. This is, like, you look at a pasture and it looks like you planted white pelicans in it. Wow. And it's not consistent. Like, there's no – you couldn't run bird watching tours doing it because we tried. (laughs) (laughs) But it's it's not consistent. But those birds will come in and they'll just – pile up in there for like two or three days yeah. and then they'll vanish and i don't know if they feed on something i don't know if they're resting and drinking fresh water because i'm thinking they filter the salt hmm. out somehow when they're in the salt water i don't i don't know that much about them i just think it's really cool to provide that habitat to them and see if come in there and then to think of that radar signature when you have that volume of hmm. birds concentrated in one place and that's one place that i've seen can you imagine some of the places we don't see yeah like, true really cool yeah there's a lot of places for birds to hide out but uh, you can see the radar signatures, which is interesting. So I think uh, Dennis Phillips' Facebook page or the the uh, Mike's Weather page Facebook page, you can see what we're talking about if you wanted to go look at it. We've got Captain Jim Fogle on the line for our Saturday Safe Boating Tip of the Week, brought to you by our good friends at Milwaukee Tool. How are you doing this morning, Captain Jim? Morning, Captain Jim. Hey, I'm I'm well. I'm well, guys. You guys are uh, sounding pretty frisky there. Oh yeah, always. Uh, I don't. I don't know if y'all have already talked about this uh, captain that was arrested uh, last weekend or not. Wow. But uh, <laughs> no, I, no, we have not. But great okay, point. Well, Let's we're talk, about talk about it. About it now. All right. First of all, this guy is a blight on our community. That's why we haven't talked about it. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. We're going to. All right. Anyway, here, my point is my point is this: if you are going to go on a boat, a charter boat, and it's obvious, and it sounds like it was with this with this chair boat, if it's obvious that this captain has been drinking, you want to get off of that boat. You do not, or you don't even get on there if you can tell. Yeah. And if you get on the boat and you're you are going out and you notice this and it should be the captain nor the crew should be intoxicated or have been drinking at any any time close to leaving, then you need to report that. I mean, it is just terribly unsafe. It's it, it's just really bad. You know, we've talked about how fast boats can go down. Well, you know, it's amplified when it's mm-hmm. a big boat with a lot of people on it, and you've got a captain that is incapacitated or not thinking straight. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that happens when a, when a boat gets in trouble. There's a lot of things that happen all at one time, and you've got everybody's got to be clear thinking, especially the captain and the crew. Amen. So yeah. we we really can't tolerate that. So if you if you notice this sort of thing. Like I said, don't get on the boat. If you're on the boat and you notice it, get off the boat and report it. Yes. And Amen. You know, yes, get off the ahead. boat and report it. You yes, sir. To. You got to. We yep. can't have people like that, you know, endangering our our uh, passengers and our guests and our tourists and each other. It just, just, just can't happen. So thank goodness they got this guy off the boat. Um without anybody getting injured and uh, hopefully he won't be back on a boat i've inquired about 
how did he get how did he keep his license with he's got two previous buis but i doubt seriously if i'm ever going to get the answer to that yeah i think that's one thing that the coast guard will hopefully tighten up now that this has uh, occurred i think it's going to bring a lot of focus on that and that's been a question i've had as well uh, because we've dealt with that with people applying and doing backgrounds it's like well yeah you've got multiple Good. things on your Good. record here how how are you able to keep a license uh and it, it's exactly. always been a, a, a question of mine as well so no i think this will definitely I mean, we, bring some light to that it, it's unfortunate yeah i mean it's but the it coast is, guard it's horrible but but it, it is easy to get a background check on somebody yeah. i mean it really doesn't take a lot of money if you're the employer it well, really doesn't take a lot of money or time yeah, to get a i mean a very in-depth We've I, conducted some for, for uh, you know, uh, employees mm -hmm. or people that have applied for jobs. And I mean, you you can get you can tell if they got a traffic ticket fifteen years ago. Yeah, in other states. It's yeah, uh, yeah, in all kinds of states. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so as anyway. Travis likes to say, good whiskey costs money, and <laughs> if you pay if you pay enough money for a background check, you can find pretty much anything out, and it's it's worth it, especially for someone in a safety sensitive position like that. But we are marine yep. employers, so what we have yes. it the the Merchant Mariner Credential or MMC is the technical term for these captain licenses, right. and uh, it really puts a big harness on the marine employer. Uh, really the, the it all falls to the marine employer to make sure that their captains are are properly credentialed and, and operating safely so we take it very seriously and it's uh those background checks a lot of times will save us and it, and it also and i think you've talked about this before on here uh captain jim like it a, a consumer should do their due diligence because that's going to weed out some of the bad guys because they can't stay in business because yeah. if you do your due diligence Hopefully, people aren't booking that guy. Like, and they should have their captain's license. They should be able to produce that little red book. And if they can't show it to you, they exactly. don't have a license. And, and yep. honestly, like I'm I, again, insure guy, they should be able to show you an insurance dex form. <laughs> like, yeah. there's no requirement in the state of Florida that people carry insurance. You should require your captain to carry it before you get on that boat. Like, and offshore, they should also have a federal permit sticker on the side of their boat. It's a little <laughs> mm -hmm. colorful sticker, so you yep. should be able to tell very easily whether they're federally permitted or not. Because if they're not federally permitted and they're taking you into federal waters, you're committing a federal crime. I've had I've run hundreds of charters in my life, fishing charters. Yeah. Never had anyone ask to see my credentials. Never had anyone ask to see Neither. my insurance proof. And I'm like... I get it and I appreciate it and I have it at it's the same just, time. It's just like Florida contractors. Like it's on the homeowner. If you hire an uh -huh. unlicensed contractor, uh -huh. That's right. you're in trouble. They need to make that same thing for, for fishing, for captains. Yeah. Like l let's be better as consumers, right? Mm -hmm. We could, we could help clean up the industry as consumers 100%. in a big way. Yeah. So you, thank you. Captain. We need, to we need to police ourselves and each other. We really do. That's Amen right. That. Okay. That's right. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Captain Jim Fogle. Thank you, guys, for the Coast Guard Auxiliary in St. Pete. Jim Fogle, be safe out there. Appreciate you, my friend. That safe boating tip was brought to you by our friends at Milwaukee Tool. Go to milwaukeetool.com and find out for yourself why Milwaukee Tools are the easy choice for the real animal fishing team. We've got Captain Bobby Woodard, Bob the Builder, on the other side. Hopefully we'll hear from you as well. 1-800-969-9352. If you want to join the conversation, we'll be right back. Have you ever built a transom in a boat? Have I? I have been a part of a transom building no. project, but I have not personally. Not no. I wouldn't know. A... I, no. No, if I build a transom in a boat, you don't want to get in that boat. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, no, my dad built uh, the hub, uh, and then he's rebuilt it twice. So I've been a part of the building process but i have never built one myself you didn't lead it no 100%. that's what i'm saying like i could be in the room when it was being built like <laughs> i guess and you could say hey hand me a beer occasionally yeah. you don't want me like, i've had a roller in my hand yeah you've gone that yes <laughs> you don't want me doing finish work and you don't want me uh <coughs> oh my god man you don't want to get in a vessel that i uh that you built <laughs> yeah that's bad news
Not better? On everything. <laughs> <laughs> Emily Thompson said no DIY. <laughs> yes. Yeah. She knows, man. <laughs> Stacy Woodham said I would get in a boat that Emily Thompson worked on, but not Travis. Yeah, no, that's, that's 100%. <laughs> tough crowd this morning. No, Travis. It's, it's not tough at all. It's accurate. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> That's it's the most accurate thing ever. <laughs> That's funny. I'm allowed to lay floors, and only because if that goes wrong, it's not like you fall through something. But there's concrete holding it up. <laughs> Captain Dan Hubbard said he wants to set up a duck hunt for veterans with you, Travis. Oh, absolutely. We'll do that in a heartbeat. When the royal poinciennas bloom, the yellowtail bite is hot. What? The what? The royal what? I don't know. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Mike Elfenbein said it on the Captain Dillon stream. All right, I'll give, I'll give, I'll give. Royal Queen suit. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Captain Lisa Fitzgerald. Told you we were gonna get them all. We, we got the the trifecta. The 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 big three. <laughs> it's it's a star tournament season, so you can pretty much set your clock by Captain Lisa. Not, sometimes they say she's the, the only female angler in the the Sports Hall of Fame. She's the only angler. She's the only angler in the Sports Hall of Fame. Yeah. Period. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. I love how Emily's trolling you right now. Dude, I, I can't even see it because I'm trying to do something else. And she's I'm sure she's just clubbing me like a baby seal right now. <laughs> And Stacy, just piling on. Yeah, <laughs> those are my friends. <laughs> That's not. It gets me every time. Yeah. The one hit wonders commercial. Yeah, it does. Ford Real Animals Radio talking fishing this morning. Want to make sure we give a shout out to our friends at Affordable Roofing Systems. Whether you need a shingle, metal, tile, or flat roof, our friends at Affordable Roofing Systems are your safest choice for repairs or replacements. With over three decades of roofing experience, let Affordable Roofing Systems guide you through this important process. They are defined by their integrity, respect, and honesty, and they have a personalized and professional approach to doing business. Call 888-397-ROOF for your free estimate today or visit them online at affordableroofingflorida.com. We've got Captain Bobby Woodard on the line. We've also got Captain Lisa Fitzgerald. We don't normally let the Hall of Famer wait on hold, but we don't want to keep her short. So we'll go to Captain Bobby first. What's going on, buddy? Hey, good morning, fellas. How are y'all? Doing well, my friend. How Captain, are you? Captain Bobby Woodard, how are you? Uh, doing well, man. Doing well. To answer your question, we're uh, we're working on soffits today. So <laughs> you're building something. Surprise, surprise. We we are building custom wood soffits. Uh, uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, I love your custom porthole window that you built in that house, too. But please stop sending yeah. me photos because my wife might see some of this yeah. DIY stuff you're doing. And it's going to ruin my life. <laughs> you guys, uh, you guys said some very flattering things that uh, maybe some are true, some are not. But no, it's it's fun, man. <laughs> That's funny. Oh man. I get a text from Bobby, and like my wife walks by, and she's like, "I'm hiding my phone." She's like, "What are you hiding from me?" And I'm like, <laughs> "You don't want to see." <laughs> it's not this. like I'm looking at <laughs> pictures I shouldn't. It's that I don't want her to see Bobby doing home improvement. Yeah, yeah. He built a crazy shower. He did this and did that. No. Oh my god. We're not doing any of that. <laughs> 
Oh man, well, you know, I, I would love to take credit for all of it, but it's, it's no different than the the right to fish and hunt act. You know, it's it's a group effort. It's you know, some some people uh, you know do more than others, but collectively, the the sum of it all is what matters. Amen to that. No, man, you you've been involved in that too, Bobby. You've been you've been helping us out and went to the Capitol with us, and um, we're really excited about that. Yeah, he can build things yeah. and he cleans up nice. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm uh, I'm tuning in a little late this morning, but uh, I I did just want to call in. Not sure if you guys have mentioned that yet or not, but you know, uh, Representative Lauren Mello, you know, was huge, you know, and, and sponsored that, and and you know, got kind of got the ball rolling, and it it pushed through. You know, it's going to be on the ballot, and and I was thinking about it last night. You know, she mentioned up at the Capitol, you know, that it's her legacy bill, and and I started thinking about what legacy really is, and you know, I mean, how this all works. I just want the the listeners to understand, like, forever is a really long time. Yeah, it is. It's literally forever. So, you know, it cannot just be her legacy. It's the legacy of everybody who's involved in it, including those who vote for it. Amen. Yeah, yes. It's, it's, the, it's the legacy of, of literally enshrining this right, not just for us and our children and our grandchildren, but literally forever in the state of Florida. That's really um, eloquently so. stated. <laughs> he's a builder. Yeah. He's a poet. I just got he's the a chills. spokesman, a statesman. Like that. Jeez. That really is good, though, Bobby. Like, this is your legacy if you vote yes to yeah, Amendment Two. That's that's incredibly that's awesome. a good way to think about it. If you care about fishing, hunting, or the idea of clean water, wild habitat, and you Amen. want that to be attached to what you something you did, that's a way to do it, man. I got chills too. Like that's great. <laughs> Jeez, I'm fired up now. I'm about to go cut that clip Ready out. To build a house. <laughs> <laughs> so, you speaking anyway, of building houses and uh, of speaking of building houses and all that stuff, you're you're building your tarpon bungalow down in Boca Grande, rebuilding it from Hurricane Ian. Uh, so, I mean, the tarpon are are pretty thick down there. I've heard, huh? It's starting to show up. Yeah, man. Yeah, they have been. Uh, had a few, you know, kind of. Not early season, but you know, a few of the first, you know, round of fish showing up, we should say. Uh-huh. Uh, but yeah, every day there's every day more and more fish showing up, and it's 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 ready. It's it's season. It's you know, it's here. It's it's transitioned from the ghost snook fishing, and so a couple of tarpon rods in the boat just in case to like leave the snook rods at home and you know just go tarpon fishing. That's awesome. It, they're back, and we're starting to see quite a few show back up around our area, too, so I assume Boca Grande's getting loaded down. Yeah. How would someone book a trip with you, Bobby? Yeah, man. Uh, give me a call, 863-224-1418, or check out the website, captain-bobby.com. There it is. You're the man. We appreciate you, Bobby. Thanks for calling in. We missed you this morning. Thanks, Bobby. Uh, all right, fellas. Take care. See you, buddy. Let him build your house. I would not let him build your website. Yes. <laughs> He can do pretty much everything except for technical Technology is not his thing. No. So there is a downside. There is everybody, no email everybody has a weakness. Everybody has one. Uh, we'll be back on the other side with Captain Lisa Fitzgerald, Real Animals Radio. We'll be right back. <laughs> that was like some kind of crisis. And then we <coughs> clicked on it and it was like from 2013 or something. Yes. Like, it's like, guys, we got to all pay attention to this. <laughs> we got to get on to we gotta we gotta do something about this. <laughs> From the Reagan administration. <laughs> Bobby, that was nineteen eighty eight. It was like a scanned picture of a newspaper <laughs> from the sixties. The you oh. and the paper was yellow, it was so old. Bless his heart. That's funny. I'll hit the head real quick. All right. <laughs>
What's Emily talking about? She said it's a backsplash. I have no idea, man. I think she was referring to when you said you built a floor. I don't know if I've built a black backsplash. Uh, I don't think I can do a backsplash. Dude, I thought tiling was, like, pretty simple. Like, I always, like, grew up thinking, like, you just put tile down. Like, you just fit it together. It can't be that hard. Dude, <laughs> tiling is not easy. Yeah, she said that's when I said I hide my phone when Bobby texts. Yeah. And I, she asked if it's a hot girl, but it's just uh, a backsplash. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. I'm not looking at pictures I shouldn't be looking at. I'm looking at... The it's, it's like it's like Bobby, Bobby Yeah, it's like Bobby's texting me inappropriate stuff because... <laughs> I don't want my wife to see what he's texting me. Yes. That's funny. <laughs> She's like, can I see your phone? I'm like, no. Absolutely why, not. Why not? What are you trying to hide? Text from Bobby? <laughs> Backsplash photos. <laughs> the new shower he built. Home improvement only fans, she suggested. <laughs> That Don Mazzetti guy, that that Taylor Taylor Lift shirt, he yeah. also had one that said "Only Gains." <laughs> I was laughing so hard. <laughs> I like the one that says "Only Fish" too. <laughs> someone someone made that. Have you seen the Only Pans girl on TikTok? Mm -mm. She's this cute girl, and she makes like really bad, like dad joke level, inappropriate jokes. Like, she'll say, send nudes, and it's noodles. <laughs> and, like, her whole shtick is, this is her OnlyPans account. And she's a, she's a cute girl, but, like, that's the whole shtick is the OnlyPans deal. And, like, she's got she's like a, Yeah, she's pulling up. chef? Yeah, like, but she's, like, not really. Oh, I gotcha. She's, like, a nurse or something that does it on the side. My wife uh, follows this one chick she's obsessed with. Literally, she's in the health industry. She went to school for eight years. Got, I think she's like some high level nurse or, or maybe even a doctor. I don't know, but she she wears this uh, like a, a really redneck wig and makes a crazy voice and she pretends like she's a lot lizard, <laughs> like a pack a day <laughs> smoker and makes prank calls. She's live on Instagram like all the time making prank calls and people pay her like. $30 or something like this and oh give her phone God. numbers of people to call and she just is Instagram live calling people and that's what she does now <laughs> just imitates this voice and makes prank phone calls for I me. freaking love like a good prank call that like doesn't hurt anybody yeah oh my gosh and I love it when like the prank caller gets caught yeah and they start having to think yeah it's so funny <laughs> have you ever seen that uh it wasn't a, well, it kind of was a prank call, but it was like a, it was a radio show in Australia and they called some dude and they're like, Hey, I just called this number randomly. Can I put you down as a reference? And then the guy, the other guy on the radio show calls him as a reference and the guy lies about it. He's like, Oh yeah, I've known him forever. It's Australia. He's like, I've known him forever. He's a great bloke. He's like, Would you recommend him as an accountant? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And like he, he holds the line the whole time. They're like. That's hilarious. Oh my gosh, dude. One of my favorite ones is when they uh, they put the the two opposing things, like they'll call a, a Domino's and they'll call a Pizza Hut, and they'll put the phones together. <laughs> Have you ever seen those? There's this great one. It's like a, a Houston area, and they call a Domino's and a Pizza Hut, and they the guys just start cursing at each other, and they're just <laughs> like, like screw one. you. Yeah, dude. Are you undercutting our prices? <laughs> No, I'm going to have to Google that now. Yeah, those are pretty funny. <laughs> Emily said, I love hearing what's on other people's TikTok algorithms. You learn so many things. <laughs> she yeah. can't talk about her TikTok algorithm. <laughs> yeah, mine skips around quite a bit. We've got Bobby from St. Pete on the line wanting to talk about the Skyway Pure New Pelican Rule. I'm going to have to look that one up. Presented by Hubbard's Marina. Now your captains, Black Anderson and Dylan Hubbard. We're back talking.
walking and fishing on this beautiful Saturday morning. Captain Dylan Hubbard from Hubbard's Marina, Captain Travis Thompson from All Florida talking and fishing this morning. Want to give a shout out to our friends over at Power Pucks, the world's first power supply trolling motor quick release bracket. They eliminate the need for an exterior power plug, which can snag lines, corrode easily, or just be an eyesore cluttering up your deck. Go to PowerPucks, P-W-R-P-U-X dot com and find out for yourself why so many of the pros are making the switch over to Power Pucks. With that, we've got our cap- our friend and legend and Hall of Famer and just all around mythical friend, <laughs> Captain Lisa Fitzgerald on the line. I can't do it as good as Captain Mike. No, He's got she, it down pat. She, she, hi, Lisa. She's the best. Yeah, she is the best. What's going on, Captain Lisa? How are you? Well. I, I'm wonderful. I, I've been out um, having a great time on the east coast of Florida, nice. um, catching tagging redfish. Uh, we've gotten our east coast fish uh, in Nassau County and Duval County, tagged and released. What a beautiful area. Um, we have also today gathering redfish from the Flagler Sport Fishing Club, and we'll be uh, tagging and red uh, putting redfish out in also, St. John's, Flagler, and Volusia, and Brevard County. So we're going to get our tag redfish in the water. I have to tell you, I love what um, Captain Mike said. You're a knothead if you are not. <laughs> uh, thank you for bringing the knothead thing back up. You're breaking up a little bit. <laughs> I think it's amazing. Yeah. You know, uh, I Saying it, I, I used to say it, it's so much kinder than saying you're a loser. But um, <laughs> you know, you are a loser because you don't have the opportunity to win. Your choice of a contender, a dead cat, a spider boat, or a micro draft skiff. Then you also have the Can Am Sea Dew package. Holy Whoa. cow! What other tournament offers you that kind of prize package? Amen. So, and. and, yeah. and- and it's the money's going to an organization that's doing incredible habitat work. Like, mm-hmm. like it's not it's just win, about win, that win. tournament. It's like you're also doing huge conservation work there too. So, like, incredible. Well, and you know, Travis, I, I am so, I was so enamored with all of the things that you shared when we were down in Miami. Um, some of the work that you're doing, and you know, we talk about the right to hunt and fish, and I'm an avid angler but hunting is my next passion and it's like asking me which son do i love more (laughs) (laughs) i can't tell you which which is more when i'm hunting man it's hunting when i'm fishing man it's fishing Mm -hmm. um i I have to tell you you know with it, it there's just so many people in our state that don't realize what is trying to be accomplished by taking away our rights to hunt and fish and then our developers who are just, um, and not slowly, but aggressively eating up every piece of viable land that has animals on it. I mean, it's just, um, and our waterways. Mm-hmm. You think that developing the interior of Florida doesn't affect our waterways? Eh, you're wrong. You got Amen. that right. Landscape conservation. Here. Amen. No, but. But I bring it up be- with you because, like, CCA, the the star tournament benefits CCA, right? So I can enter it and I can win a, some cool prizes, and I can do I can enter it even without catching fish, and but it, it also CCA is doing so much work out there with oyster reefs or clams or like like they're just incredible with all the stuff they're doing. Yeah, the redfish releases. Well, we're getting ready. Um, this coming. Uh, I believe it is this Wednesday, no, Tuesday morning, Tuesday at Cockroach Boat Ramp. If you have not adopted your own redfish, you can. You can go online to the CCA Florida website. We have an adopt a redfish program, and we're putting more larger redfish back into Tampa Bay. We're going to be doing that at Cockroach Boat Ramp at noon. It is going to be an exciting opportunity for there are a lot of people who have adopted these redfish. We tag them with their specific number. We put those fish out into the water, and when they're recaptured, you get information, how that redfish has grown and all of the things that have happened. I mean, one of the coolest things that I've had 
happened recently is over in the um, Vero Beach area, mm -hmm. we had a 2018 tagged redfish recaptured. Wow. Oh, that's that's the best. amazing. That's really cool. So think about that. The fish had grown almost six inches since 2018. Wow. That's amazing. So, so what a testimony. Say, oh, putting redfish into the water, they don't survive. You know, um, well, you're wrong because that is proof positive that these fish, once they're put into the water, do survive. They do reproduce. They do help restock our environment. So, awesome. I, I mean, I, I really have gotten off the topic of what I'm so passionate <laughs> about is stock. But I, I can tell you, you know, it is. It is such a cool opportunity what STAR has done for CCA. Yes. It's taken a membership from 2015 and our partnerships with with organizations like you, Travis, like uh, Real Animals, like you, Dylan. We've taken our membership from 9,000 recreational anglers in 2015 to 20,000 anglers. That's and that awesome. is an ouch point for me because... We should be two million. Yes. We should. Every recreational angler should be involved either in CCA or one of the other conservation organizations out there doing great work and supporting what they are passionate about. And they're not. They should be all members of all of them. Yeah. They should be members of all, all of them. And then you, all of them. you can throw more money wherever you, you're most passionate. But, yeah, there's a lot of good work being done by some of those orgs. Amen. And I, I talk about CCA in a lot of rooms that I'm in because I admire so much the work you guys do. Well, thank you. And, Dylan, I'm so, I'm so proud of you. You have just built an empire. You talk about a legend. Um, you are the legends in the fishing industry and i i can only see you doing some really great things for florida you too travis um i it's just i get goosebumps um thinking about what the three of us have accomplished and that's just three of us could you imagine if it was three hundred thousand people yeah. doing great work and you know the volunteers we see the same volunteers every single event Come on, people, get out there. If you want a cool experience, <laughs> come help put oysters back into the water. Help us replant mangroves. Help us put grasses back into the water. I was recently Amen. in the Lagoon. It's gorgeous. We were in the areas where we had clams. The water was clear, and we Beautiful. had grasses. Imagine what we can do in the rest of the state if we can get the support we need. Amen to that. Well, That's the tell, uh, well, Reverend, tell. Reverend Lisa Fitzgerald <laughs> <laughs> providing the sermon this morning. Amen to that Hall well, of I'm Famer. Gonna I'm going to be preaching today. I have a ladies' seminar at Miller's Marine um, in uh, Ocala. I'm here in Ocala getting nice. ready to go out and get some women out on the water. Uh, I do want to encourage everyone to register for the CCA Florida Star competition presented by Yamaha. We have some amazing prizes. We have $100,000 in college scholarships just for youth. That's awesome. There's two $25,000 scholarships and 10 $5,000 scholarships. That's presented by Real Tree Fishing and Real Tree Hunting. They get involved. Um, and, you know, to date, it's going to be a million dollars in college scholarships. Whoa. So we don't just do habitat restoration, but we restore youth to getting involved in our fishing. Um, and most of these scholarship winners, you know what they want to be? Fishing Marine <laughs> college or That's right. That's awesome. So we're creating some really cool, uh, a, a really cool legacy with this. So please get out there, register, pick up trash while you're on the water, do the right thing, um, get engaged and, and, Make changes in your lifestyle. Quit using single-use water bottles. Get away from plastic. Start using paper. Pick up trash. There's so many things that we all can do. So Amen. off my sofa and on to the next. Thank you, Captain Lisa. We appreciate it. Check out CCAFLstar.com to get signed up. And uh, we'll talk to you again next week. Yes, sir. Thank you. And you guys have a great day. It's gorgeous weather. Bye, Miss Lisa. Well. Bye.
Always a pleasure to hear from the Hall of Famer. The best. Reverend Hall of Famer, <laughs> Lisa Fitzgerald. <laughs> We've got Bobby from St. Pete on the line. How you doing, Bobby? <laughs> Happy 420, guys. Daddy. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, and I, I was, I didn't get to the point. I've been, you know, calling Captain Mike Anderson for 10 years, and I've been talking to you too, Captain Dylan. Yeah. And you're looking swole, brother. I see on that Facebook, man. I mean, <laughs> Thank I, you. you weren't real fat or anything, but you, in the past three, three, you know, four, three months, really, but past year, I've really seen a big difference. Man, you're looking swole. And I, I like that beard you got going on. Like, I kind of, I'm not copying you or nothing, but anyway, anyway. I had a question about, um, and I love Captain Mike Anderson. I've lost 230 pounds over the past 10 months, man. So wow. I'm excited about seeing other people that, 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 cause, cause you're inspiration, you know, because there's a lot of people out there nowadays on, 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 on the, we call them, you know, the, uh, the Democrats, I would say, and they want you fat, dumb uh, on their system, you know, so you got to fight them one way or the other. And, our health is the only thing we got these days and we just pray to God and we keep trying and, and thank you for being an inspiration, uh, Captain uh, Dylan. No problem, my friend. So you have a question about the Skyway Pier today? Yeah, I'm going to be going to the Skyway to fish off the pier. Okay. Now, I was looking to have some type of, now I, I got a 92 IQ, so I'm not very, I, 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 if you tell me, move that over there, move, I, can, I can move that over there, you're like, hey man, need that over there, hey, do, can you get that up there? I'm good at that, but just trying to give me algorithms and equations. Anyways, and then that's what I'm trying to say is they have some tests or something I got to take before I don't want to hurt the pelicans or something. Yeah, so there is an education requirement to fish off the Skyway Pier. Uh, if you go to uh, just if you search Skyway Fishing Pier Pelican Rule, you can find it on the MyFWC website. Uh, but I'll put the link in our live stream as well. Uh, but there's a uh, education old course that you take online, and it's not so much a test. It's literally you just watch the videos and read a couple things and answer some questions based on it. But it's not like a any kind of difficulty level to pass no pass fail yeah no pass fail and then once you do that then there are some seasonal gear restrictions but it's only seasonal they start november 15th to march 15th so right now there is no seasonal restriction on any gear the only thing that's year round out there is you can't use uh anything more than two sets of hook and line gear so you can't be fishing more than two rods at once which I never recommend anyway. So uh, basically, it's uh, just go online and take that little educational course, and uh, it's super easy. Okay, 30 per second. I talked to uh, Tia, Tia Mahoney because I, I just moved here. Um, this guy, I got blessed. I got here two years ago, mm-hmm. and I'm just getting everything all together. And, and, and Tia, Tia Mahoney came and said, go come to him. So get me all the fishing gear I need and everything to get me set up because I want to start getting mackerel. Yeah. So I'm thinking just getting aligned with shrimp and yep. just going it out there. But I'm going to go see Tim Mahoney and get my gear all set up and, and say, what's up, Dan? Because I've been talking to him for years because I used to noodle on Lake Hatton in Cole, Cole County. And he told me how dangerous it was because I just moved out there probably a year and I started noodling up there because I saw that show on CMT. And so I, I saw some big ones, man. And I, and I got some 20-pounders. And Tim Holmes said, uh, Bobby, you better start new out there and lick hats off. Thank you guys for the show. I love you, man. Thank you, Bobby. We appreciate Take you, my care, friend. Take care, buddy. Have a great day. Good luck out there. Noodling. Noodling in Polk County. I would not go noodling in Florida, period. Yeah. There's noodling that, like, that Hannah Barron. What is she? Yeah, that's doing? noodling for in catfish like Tennessee. in, like, Tennessee, where there's no alligators. Exactly. Or, exactly. I don't. I, Water moccasins. That, yeah, a lot of snakes, too. Alligator snapping turtles up there. I'm not so worried about gators, we have them. but snakes. A those sna- water moc- moccasins yeah. don't play. No, it's it's turtles would be my biggest fear there. All right, the we're going to talk more about this on the other side. Real Animals Radio will be right back. <laughs> Here. 
in Sarasota Lexus dealers. Looking for the Bay Area's premier family boating resource? Look no further than Pro Marine Performance Center. Located at 9293 Bay Pine Boulevard in St. Pete and online at ProMarineUSA.com. They sell new and used boats, on including Sea Hunt, and specialize in repowers and are a Yamaha and Mercury. All right, now we're back. Now we're back. But yeah, I think I do, water moccasins don't worry me. It's the it would be that big old alligator snapping turtle. Like you stick your hand in there, and you <sighs> he wouldn't kill you, but you would come back without a hand. Yeah, like or an alligator. Yeah, and alligators, but alligators at the same time though they're pretty. They're, they're, they're not going to be in a hole so much. You're going to see them. I feel like uh, they hide in holes. Oh yeah, hmm. yeah. Alligator would be like. If you grabbed an alligator and he reacted, he would snap at you. But let me confirm here. Did that guy say happy 420? Was he did sorry? and coughed. <laughs> he did and coughed as though he was. Okay. Uh, I'm just making I was sure not sure that, if that was that like too. an homage for, when it started that way, I was not sure that was not an homage to a prank call, like a like a Roy D. Mercer or something. like. We were getting prank calls? Yeah. But, I mean, it was good questions, yeah. good, good discussion. I just, I wasn't sure when he did the happy 420. <laughs> <laughs> That was, uh, that was interesting. And then he mentioned Mahoney, and I was like, ah, oh, this all makes sense. Gotta love a woman who carries a flask. Does Hannah Barron carry a flask? Who's he talking no, about? No, that was before that. I don't... I don't know who was carrying the flask. Maybe Lisa Fitzgerald? I think it was during Lisa's, but I, I didn't hear Lisa mention a flask. Yeah. Donald, what you talking about? <coughs> I wouldn't put it past Lisa. I could see her doing that. Carrying a flask? Yeah. Maybe he saw her in an event. Stacy Woodham said, I'm attending my first CCA banquet next week. Really excited to join such a passionate group of anglers. It's fun. Those banquets are a lot of fun. Well, have you, you know Adam? You know Adam Miller, CCA, uh, their CEO. I think I've met. Adam him came to that uh, roundtable we did with the candidate and Polk. Oh yeah. Last week you were out of town, so Bobby yeah. came on behalf of FGA. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Stacy met Adam, and Adam's like, "You got to come. You got to get involved in this banquet. This idea, and, the other. and it, it's good for Stacy because Adam's also the guy, the guy that would go help her with her banquets, like." Hmm. CCA is one of the most open organizations. Bobby Woodard said Captain Lisa carries a flask. She does. That's awesome. Stories with Nancy Grace. This is the Part 04 Real Animals Radio Show. Presented by Hubbard's Marina. Now your captain, Mike Anderson and Dylan Hubbard. Captain Dylan Hubbard here for the Bartow Ford Real Animals Radio on News Radio 970 WFLA. We got Captain Travis Thompson from all Florida in studio this morning chatting fishing. Want to make sure we give a shout out to our friends over at Ace Heating and Cooling. For over 20 years now, Ace Heating and Cooling has been a name you can trust in the heating and air conditioning business in Hillsborough County. Chris Myers and his guys service all brands and they do residential and commercial repairs, maintenance, and full replacements. They send out technicians, not salesmen, because they build that long-lasting customer relationship that holds up over time. Call 813-657-8818 or look them up online at brandonac.net to find out for yourself why Ace Heating and Cooling is the easy choice for the Real Animals Radio Show. Also, want to make sure we remind you guys again, we have picture-perfect weather. Uh, it does not get any better weather-wise, really, right now. And uh, it's a gorgeous weekend. Great time to get out there. We're on a, a front side of the full moon, which is going to be like Monday, Tuesday is the full moon. We're also on the front side of a little tiny weak cold front. That's going to be kind of Monday afternoon, Monday night. So barometer should be moving. Moon's getting bigger. Water's flowing. Tide's flowing. Bait's here. Water's clear. It is a good time to get out there and capitalize on some great fishing 
And that weather update is brought to you by our good friends over at Reese Windows and Doors. They are Florida's leading window and door company with over 50 years in the business. They offer free installation on most windows and doors, and they install in just six weeks. They only use in-house installers, no freelance contractors, and they come with a double lifetime warranty, which never, which means you never pay for a warranty when you sell your house. That warranty transfers to the new owners, adding value to your home. Visit ReeseWindows.com for more info. Thanks for joining the show this morning, Travis. Glad to be here, man. Thanks for having me over. I always appreciate you making the trip over from Egypt. Imperial Polk County. Where's Ron? Yeah, Ron from Ron's Tackle Box. We didn't hear from him today. Yeah, usually we've got, like, I don't have to provide a Polk County update. He yeah. he provides it for me. Yeah, there was no Ron from Ron's Tackle Box. He's probably weighing in like an 18-pound bass this morning, you know? Guaranteed. Yeah, he's got things to do. I can tell you, though, he saw really big bass, the bite's really good, and the royalty purple booyah lipless crankbait is the bait <laughs> of choice. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> got it covered yeah no he's awesome he's he's incredible it's a great shop if you're if you're ever in lake alford it's like a Swing museum pond. yeah it is it's like a museum going in there and uh it's it's right there on the main drag in lake alford it's easy to find it's easy to see and it's 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 a cool you what you need to do is go over there and then go to gary's oyster bar in lake alford eat some oysters oh. it's one of the classic oyster bars in florida oh like, i like love oyster your bars. old dive bar type place love it this is that. I'm here for it. So go, go late afternoon, go to Ron's, see the tackle shop. Dude, what I really want to do is I've talked to my cousin about this because my cousin Garrett is like known for those type of places is I want to start like a, a page or a website or a collection of like these are the places in Florida that you should visit that your wife might question when you walk in the door like where are we eating? Yeah. But these are the good places. Yeah. You ever Wouldn't been to Cherry cool? Pocket? No. Oh, yeah. Like I've. We need to compare notes off air because I've got a whole list of places like that. We're built, we're doing this. And then I also Josh, have a. We're calling Josh. <laughs> I also have a uh, a list of gas stations. Yes, you told me about this. Yeah, the gas are, station like, food. But it can't just be like the roller grill at racetrack. Like you it's got to be like this is legit like gas station one food. off gas stations, and like you begin to know the chef at the gas station that's frying running the fryer. Let's do it. Yeah, like it's got to be like. Mm. Yeah, all right. So, how would someone book a trip with you? Uh, Duck Ranching uh, on social media, or you can find us at allfla.org on social media, or allfla.org online. Check them out, Captain Travis Thompson. Hopefully, we'll see you tomorrow night, 7:30 p.m. for our live stream show on the Real Animals and Hubbard's Marina Facebook pages. We give away over $1,500 in free stuff. So, join us tomorrow night, 7:30 p.m. Also, tomorrow, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. on 620 D W. DAE Catch Real Animals Sunday. Hopefully we'll see you next week. Join us every Saturday right here. Real Animals Radio will be right back. Don't forget, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too darn busy. Just too busy. <laughs> love that dude yeah he started it, it when he was on uh box 13 back in the day it was big 13 and i think he did it every weekday morning i don't know he did it a lot like it was Hustle. not just once a week and uh yeah he was he was there in person at the studio too so he drove to tampa every morning oh yeah because you could do it remote no such thing as a remote yeah <laughs> And uh, he would do that that sign off. If you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too busy. And when he left 13, uh, the the guy was there, Salty Saul. He continued to say that that phrase because uh, him and my grandfather were good friends. Okay. So some people will say that was Salty Saul's phrase, but uh, the story I've always heard is my grandfather was the one who started it. And he I, had to yeah. Let Salty Saul use it, but regardless. <laughs> Still is a, a family phrase. Scott Scott shared a uh, salty salt post like a week or so ago on Facebook. Scott Moore. Yeah. And like I, I was like, man, I hadn't thought about that in a billion years. Yeah. Still, it still uh, lives on. If our antenna was pointed towards Tampa, we got yeah. the Tampa stations over in Polk. So. Ah, there you go. I'm your gonna, antenna. Yeah. Like your rabbit ears. Yeah, like before you had cable, you had antenna. All right, I'll take your word for it. Come on, man. <laughs> Don't be a millennial. All right, guys, hopefully we'll see you again next week for another episode tomorrow night. Don't forget to catch the live stream show at 7.30 p.m. on the Real Animals Facebook, the Hubbard's Marina Facebook, the Hubbard's Marina YouTube. Also, we'll see you tomorrow morning, 7 to 9 a.m. on 620 WDAE. 
uh, and uh, perhaps the Real Animals Facebook. Keep in mind, Sunday mornings, if Mike's not there, they don't stream live to Facebook. So just on Sundays, if you don't see it on the Real Animals Facebook page, doesn't mean they're not live on the radio. So tune in, and uh, hopefully we'll see you next weekend. You got anything to add, buddy? No. Y'all be good. Thanks All for listening. FLA.org. Check it out. Check it out. Go to the kitchen. And um, yes on two. Right to hunt and fish. I didn't say that. Pillow did. <laughs> see you guys.